number one, number two, number three. In our last video, we took a hands-on look at the Pites V10A, a compact IP66 rated wall mount lithium battery built for DIY solar and off-grid applications. Today, we're taking it to the next step. We're pairing the V10A with the EG4 6000 XP inverter, and I'll show you exactly how to wire it up, configure communications, power it up safely, and test it under real world loads. So let's get started. So here's our setup. We have the Pites V10A battery. It is mounted on the wall with the EG4 6000 XP directly above it. We've added a small test board with uh, outlets for our phase one and our phase two. That's gonna let us connect our heat guns, uh, quartz lights, and other things for live testing. Together, this pair forms a powerful off-grid backbone of about 10 kilowatt hours of storage with full 120, 240 volt split phase output from the EG4 6000 XP. So our communication and connection setup. First, let's set the dip switches on the Pites V10A correctly. Switch one and two need to be in the down position. Switches three and four are gonna be in the up position, and switches five and six will be in the down position. That's the proper configuration for pairing it with the EG4 6000 XP. Next, note that the blue Cat5 cable included in the box is intended for battery-to-battery -battery communication when linking with multiple V10A units together. Uh, for inverter communication, use a standard Cat5 or Cat6 cable. Plug one end into the COM port, as you see here on the V10A. That's the fourth port from the left, and the other end into the battery communication port on the EG4 6000 XP. Now, we're gonna go through the power up sequence. Now that the wiring is complete, let's power everything on in the correct order. We're gonna start with the Pites V10A. We're gonna flip the main power switch to on. Next, we're gonna press and hold the small orange button below it for about one second until the status light turns on, as you see here. Third, we're going to switch on the DC breaker that's on the right side, and that's gonna energize our output cable going up to the inverter. That's the battery cable. The battery is now live and it's ready. Next, the EG4 6000 XP. Let's turn it on. Go ahead and turn on the battery breaker here on the EG4 6000 XP. On the right side of the inverter, yes. we're going to turn the switch to on to boot the inverter up. When the screen comes mm -hmm. on, go ahead and turn on the utility breaker and the load breaker now. If you're using it off grid, switch on the EPS breaker to the left side, there's a button there, and that's gonna turn on your emergency power supply mode. That'll give you electricity. Let's get the inverter and the battery talking to each other now. So we're gonna hold the enter button for about two seconds to enter this setup menu. You'll see the setting index flashing. Next, use the up or down arrow buttons to navigate to index three. That's the battery. You'll see it on the battery icon, then press enter. Next, when the battery type flashes, choose lithium ion, L-I-I-O-N, and press the enter to confirm. Next, we're going to press the enter, and it's going to take us over, and we're gonna scroll through the battery brands until you see number six. Six is the Lux Power protocol for the battery. That's the same protocol the Pites V10A uses with the EG4 6000 XP. Go ahead and press enter, save, and exit. If everything's connected correctly, guys, you're going to now see live battery data on the display, such as your SOC, that's your state of charge, your capacity, and your voltage. 
That now confirms that we have closed loop communication and it's active between our V10A and our 6000 XP. Now let's move on to the load test demonstration. With the system online, let's put it to work. Our test panel has two 20 amp circuits, one per phase. We'll go ahead and start by plugging it into a hairdryer to pull a balanced load on both legs. Let's give it another shot. So here's number one, number two, number three. Off the battery. One hundred and eight percent. All right, we're going to go ahead and turn on the fourth one. And I think it's going to crash. Yep. And running four of those, it went ahead and it, oh, and it turned back on automatically. That's interesting. But it's pulling 131.9 amps. All right, guys, that was pretty impressive. Uh, these four dryers definitely served their purpose as an inductive load. And I'll have to say, the Pites battery stood firm. It provided all the power, no hesitation. The EG4 6000 XP stood firm. No flickering, no fluctuations. It stood at 107% until it finally shut it down. That's uh, It gave that surge and then shut down. So uh, thumbs up. A huge thumbs up to the Pites V10A paired with the EG4 6000 XP. I am incredibly impressed. Awesome. This is a great visual for how stable and responsive the system is under load. As you can see, no flicker, no voltage drops, just clean, instant power. What about thermal performance and the noise? Well, even after several minutes of the load, the 6000 XP stays cool. The Pites V10A Sealed IP66 enclosure keeps all the dust and the moisture out and it keeps it safe. So it's perfect for your garage, your shed, or any of your coastal setups out here. So key takeaways, guys. Dip switches, remember one and two down, three and four up, and five and six down on your V10A. Use the COM port on the right side for your communication. Your cable. 
standard CAT5 or CAT6 to the inverter battery port. Your protocol, lithium and EG4. That's the Lux Power protocol. And our result, automatic SOC and full closed loop control. So in our test, the system delivered steady power, fast response without a single glitch. It's proof that the V10A and the 6000 XP from EG4, they're a perfect match for DIY off-grid builders. Guys, for verified discount codes and updates, check our coupon code and link in the description and always updated at solarcodefinder.com. Until next time, keep shining, stay charged, and we'll see you again.